Hi, welcome to Excel for chapter one. So Excel for chapter one, I have, I'm have i gonna have two different videos for the Excel work in chapter one, because there's a lot of work in Excel for chapter one, and there's none in chapter two. So don't be surprised if you don't see a chapter two Excel, I just go from chapter one to chapter three. Now, in chapter one, I'm picking a couple elements in chapter one to do uh, these demonstration videos and they come from the textbook so right here is in the textbook here's an example on the marginal uh, benefit to accounting so this is a lot of this material is coming straight from the textbook for the class for chapter one so we're going to go over the net benefit problem and then we're going to go over and talk about the accounting based accrual basis and or and the financial view cash basis types of problems and then finally in this video we're going to look at uh, a little personal finance example of cash inflows and outflows okay so this spreadsheet is broken up into three different tabs so i'm going to color the tabs down here so you understand that this is going to be each Excel workbook is broken up, can be broken up into multiple worksheets. So here are the three worksheets. Let's make this color a little bit more distinctive. Okay, so here are the three worksheets. I label them net benefits, cash and accrual, or accrual and cash, and cash flow. All right. So for each chapter, except chapter two, I'm going to be producing a video and a work along Excel workbook for you to practice some of these main concepts of these chapters in. And these Excel workbooks will help you with any, with some of the My Finance Lab homeworks and quite, and some of the exam questions as well will be based on similar material. Although there's, there's no Excel on the exam. Okay. So for the first problem, we're looking at this corporation and they're trying to consider um, a, a, a renovation and replacement of some old outdated carpet manufacturing equipment. So the objective is to improve the efficiency of the operations in terms of speed and reduce the number of deficits. So the company's finance department has uh, put together data that allow, allow us to conduct a marginal cost benefit analysis for the proposed rela replacement equipment. So the cash outlay, outlay to buy the new equipment would be $600,000 to buy the new equipment. The book value of the old equipment is 250,000. The total benefits to the new equipment in dollar terms will be 900,000. So when they say benefits, they mean this is what the new equipment is gonna provide over the old equipment as far as saved labor hours, save money from defects, save money from loss of material. And then the benefits from the old equipment over a similar period of time would be only 300000 So when we, first thing we want to put together, they're asking us to create a spreadsheet to conduct a, a marginal cost benefit analysis for Montesanto. And determine the following. The marginal added benefit of the proposed new equipment, the marginal added cost of the proposed new equipment, and the net benefit of the proposed new equipment. So we look at the, what are the benefits of the new equipment? Well, this we could pull right from here when we have the total benefits of the new equipment. Let's put that there. And it says the less the benefits of the old equipment. So here we have the benefits of the old equipment. So this says the marginal added benefits of the new equipment versus the old equipment. I simply take the new equipment minus the old equipment and so by Getting the new equipment, we're going to save six hundred thousand dollars, and that is, you know, these when they say marginal benefits or what the benefits are, they're usually talking about maybe re reduced uh, power or energy to run the equipment, uh, maybe reduced amount of people or labor labor needed to uh, run the equipment, and maybe the equipment being. Uh, more efficient in using the materials, uses less materials, has less mistakes, less waste. So these are kind of things that would be calculated to, cal to calculate that value. Okay, so the cost of the new equipment, if we're going to buy the new equipment, it says here, cash outlay would be 600000 for the new equipment. 
if we were to sell the old equipment, which we would sell at the book value, we could see the actual marginal cost, which would be the new equipment less the proceeds of the sale of the equipment, so it'd be 350,000. So the net benefits are going to be the marginal added benefits minus the new marginal added costs. So 250,000 would be the net benefits. And I'll, so would you recommend, what would you recommend the firm do? Well, since the net benefits are 250,000, it's obvious that you would recommend the firm buy the new equipment. Okay, I'm gonna leave problem two for you to complete following the same set of instructions I did for problem one here. And again, if we go into the textbook, you can go into textbook chapter one and you can review uh, this similar problem if you want to have some context or some background to how this problem is looked at you can do something similar uh, there's similar examples in the textbook okay and we're going to move to the next major problem in the textbook which is going to be the accrual versus the financial Okay, so here, let me make this bigger. So in here we have four sets of problems. So let's just focus on problem one and two. And I'm gonna adjust this so we can get everything on the screen. Just trying to make it as big as possible for you to see. Okay, so we have problem one, products shipped and built. So we built and ship to customers $500,000 worth of our products. Our accounts receivable department has only collected $325,000 of the $500,000 and shipped out on account. And the cost to build the $500,000 worth of goods is $350. So from the accounting view, the accounting view is always the rosier, uh, more profitable view, because we're just gonna look at the revenues and we're gonna look at the cost of goods sold and we're going to calculate the profits from this. We're going to take the revenues minus the costs. So you get 150,000 here. Now in the in the textbook you see that um, they say net profits here, but this is more in my mind. I would think of this as more of like gross profits. But in the financial or cash world, the real world, we would say the cash flow would be the collection we actually collected in the cash outflow is the money we paid to make the inventory that we sold. And we wanna just put this, we don't want this as a negative, okay. So the net cash flow would be the cash inflow minus the cash outflow. So there's two different worlds here. Like the accounting view would say you made 150,000, but your cash uh, savings account or checking account would say you lost 25,000 because you haven't yet collected all of the sales. So those are the two basic views that we'd look at here. Now on this side of the equation, I'm going to do problem two as well. You can do problem three and four on your own. It's, they're pretty simple. So, but another example, we use the revenues as the sales revenues, less, um, we put the costs in here, cost of goods sold. So the accounting view is just gonna look at what we have sold in our books minus the cost, and it's gonna show that we made $450,000. As far as the cash flow, um, it's gonna look at the actual collections of cash, and then it's gonna also look at the cost of goods sold because that means this we put cash into it, this, these goods to make them. So the true net cash flow here would be again the cash flow minus the uh, cash inflow minus the cash outflow. So this is going to be a, only a net cash flow of two hundred thousand. So those are the two different views that when we discuss cash flow later in the book and we discuss uh, income statement is going to be produced in more of an accounting view as the cash flow statement is going to be more of the a financial cash basis. Uh, looking at it that way. Okay, so let's look at a different personal example of cash flow. So let's make this bigger. Way too big here. 
So we got two problems here. I'm only going to work on the first problem. So let me put this one to the side. So this is problem one. And again, for, you know, just as the reinforcement, everything I'm doing in these videos throughout this class, you're going to see represented in the textbook. So if you're reading chapter one, you're going to see there's an example based on there's an example based on this personal financial example of the cash inflow and outflow. So that's basically what I'm basing this problem on. And this, again, I want to reinforce what I show in these Excel videos are problems taken straight from the textbook. So if any of these concepts I go over in the video you're not quite sure of, go back to the textbook and we'll reinforce it there. But here, this is just a quickly understanding what's a cash inflow and a cash outflow. So just like they um, show in the textbook, everything here, we're going to have the cash outflows as negatives and cash inflows as a positive amount. So, so here we have, and you see in the textbook, they, they do have um, maybe slightly different categories, but I think we can agree the cash inflow would be your net pay. So this is your pay. And then your cash outflow would be your rent. Textbook Purchasing textbooks, say this is sort of September's cash outflow, car insurance, utilities, Netflix, uh, food, and gas. Uh, so let's put that down here. Now, for student loan, we'd have to see, is this student loan, um, this is us borrowing money, so we're not making a payment on the student loan, so this would be also another cash inflow, because this would be coming from uh, borrowing money as a student loan, but it becomes a cash inflow because this goes money into your account. Uh, there might be a loan from mom, and again, this is gonna be a cash inflow, because it's mom giving you money you're borrowing money. So whenever you bar make money or borrow money, this would be cash flow. So when we go over the cash flows, you'll see there'll be cash flow from operations or work and cash flow from financing or borrowing money. So if we add both columns up, so we're gonna put in here a little formula sum. And with this sum formula, I'm gonna add the whole column. So I have $3,000 worth of cash flow coming in. And if I sum this column here, the function, Excel function, and I highlight this column, you'll see that there's a cash outflow of 2,170. So we can add, this is in the text, but if we were to add the net um, cash flow for this particular period, this month, we might want to say our, our cash inflow minus our cash outflow. In this case, we will have a double negative here. We have a net cash inflow of 830. Okay, so let's you work on problem two over here. And that would be it for chapter one Excel. Now look for chapter one part two where we're going to talk about some taxing situations and some other calculations from the the textbook in chapter one chapter one has a lot of small little calculations i just want to show you how you can work out in excel okay thank you for taking your time to listen to this video and hope you found it helpful take care